points over and over again, which is like, you know, there's a difference between Joseph Stalin and Franklin Delano Roosevelt. I mean, you get it. It's like, uh, why? What is that? How does that have to do with like power or, uh, or people who have like institutional power that don't go corrupt? What does that even have to do with, what does that even have to do with like power in general? Because ultimately democracy or every sort of governance literally revolves around the distribution of power. That's just what it is. That is technically what it is. Okay. So for him to say like, well, these are not about power. I, I don't understand how you can make that argument and then not even make an argument and, and continue on with the uh, difference between, uh, you know, FDR and, and Stalin. Look at, look at the democratic West, all things considered. Yeah. The leadership has been okay. Okay to good. I mean, FDR did fucking put, uh, I mean, the, the uh, camps were not a great demonstration of power. Uh, I know we're going to watch the PlayStation event in a, in a second. I want to I wanna finish this first. And I know, listen, there's like a weird sea of people in here right now. Half of you guys are losing your mind over the PlayStation event, and half of you guys are losing your mind over the Andrew video. Is there actually a PlayStation event? Like, is there a, a, a State of Play PlayStation event? Because I will watch Especially it. compared to absolutely catastrophically horrible, which is the alternative. Yeah, yeah. Is, is it so when we, yeah. we've, 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 we don't give our functional institutions you the benefit the of the doubt. Place. And that doesn't mean they shouldn't be yeah. subject to criticism. But the no idea problem. that they're predicated on arbitrary power. Oh my God, my door is open and, and some people just walked in. Straight up. Why is your door open? Because I was putting groceries into my, into my, uh, apartment. Guys, I, okay, I'm gonna watch all of that. Just fucking wait, dude. I'm gonna watch all of that. Uh, before I continue with, like, everything that's going on, okay? And the state of play, I can't wait to fucking see Ratchet and Clank again. Uh, it's going to be fucking Ratchet and Clank over and over again. I need to run an ad. It's top of the hour every hour. And you can avoid the, those ads by uh, a 60 rough, second ad break. Or uh, fucking by subscribing. Me. Hi, I'm Jeff. Audio producer at Unknown Worlds. Here, we'll watch Set this for now. And then, the original, and then I'll watch Sonata the Andrew video. Here's the ad break now. Plunges players into a frigid underwater adventure. Oh no! Of answers. Here, the native Is this wildlife above and Below the is this literally Subnautica? <laughs> Assuming you don't become an ice pop first. The previous research crew has vanished, including your sister. This oh no, 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 no. She never took it off. To uncover the truth, you'll need to get crafty, building tools and shelter for your survival. Okay, this doesn't look but so scary, chat. You guys fucking made it seem like this. Oh god! Oh, okay, never mind. I told you to stay off my land. With the PS5 DualSense controller, every icy shock feels like it's being sent right into your hands. The haptic feedback system allows you to feel each adrenaline-filled chase and provides visual and audio cues as you use resources, encounter key game moments, or get into situations where it's probably best to run. By the time you squint to see what's ahead, it may already be too late. Fortunately, when you play Below Zero on PS5, players will get a crystal clear experience with up to 4K graphics, targeting 60 FPS when in performance mode. And if you already own a physical or digital version of the first Subnautica on PS4, you'll be able to upgrade to the digital PS5 version at no additional cost. We hope you're as excited as we are to dive into the world of Subnautica Below Zero when it launches on PS5 and PS4 on May 14th. Sussy. 
We can't wait to dive deep into Subnautica Below Zero and make baseless accusations against our crewmates in Among Us later this year. Looks like Ratchet and the gang are ready for the spotlight. Next for those up, of you tuning in now, the reason why that Subnautica June, sh shit hit hard is because I uh, people here know that I'm terrified of the ocean and therefore wanted me to play Subnautica. So I told them I'd do it at 40k subs, which we are literally about to hit, so... Or because I pre-watched a live event, as always. Missing info bot located. Initiating retrieval. No! No! no. no. I'm Marcus Smith, creative director of Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, a brand new full-length Ratchet & Clank adventure built from the ground up for the PlayStation 5 console. Today we're going to introduce you to some of the gameplay, characters, and arsenal of Rift Apart. Whether you've played every game since Ratchet & Clank's debut, or you're brand new to the series, Rift Apart is a standalone adventure oh, that you brother. won't want to miss. Let's get into it. Oh. I don't care about Ratchet & Clank, Clank, boys. I'm sorry. Clank? Like, I, I'm not a fucking a huge fan. A Wombax? What is this place? Where are you, Clank? Maybe someone around here has seen him. Have any of you seen a little gray robot anywhere? Uh, green eyes, red antenna, very charming. Ratchet has been separated from his best friend and partner, Clank, and is now in a new dimension and a mysterious urban Do you own a PS? Yeah, of course. I'm a huge... Oh, fuck. It's over. It's over. Stop gifting. Stop gifting. Always promises made, promises kept. I said I would paint my fingernails black with the fingernail polish that uh, some and one of you guys sent me, Dr. and also Nefarious I'll play Subnautica as well. Capable villain. Welcome to the Nefarious City Bazaar. Please remember to thank our marvelous Emperor before, during, and after. This looks kind of cool. Never mind. I take that back. Emperor? Does that mean there are two Nefariouses now? Clank first, nefarious later. Maybe he's in this bazaar. Thanks to the new hardware, the worlds in Rift Apart are more beautiful than ever. Cities are full of life with traffic and civilians milling about everywhere. Rift Apart is full of the unexpected. Characters in this new dimension are not always the same as they were in Ratchet and Clank's dimension. Ratchet comes across Miss Zircon, the weapon vendor in Rift Apart. Wait a second. You forgot your order. Well, come right in. What cyberpunk should have been? What, a fucking furry game? Sell you weapons, but you gotta be less conspicuous, or the resistance will not last. It does the look resistance? better than cyberpunk. Oh, apologies, sugar. Ms. Zircon is still new to all of this. Espionage! Release the hostage! Clank has been taken by a mysterious new Lombax named Rivet. Clank! No! No! I need to go after that ship! How can I get off planet? It's a test! Only royal starships are allowed to leave anything else. No! The Phantom can help! Just follow the beat to Club Nefarious and you will find him. Club Nefarious, got it. Oh, and <laughs> nice work, Secret Agent Zircon. <laughs> Delete that tweet, nephew, no so way. Exciting. Stay to play, more like Club floppy Nefarious play. shouldn't be hard to miss. Better look around. 
I'm saying they're all furry games. the new all gas no breaks after this Dr. Nefarious? So that sounds like a club all right Once Ratchet finds Phantom, he learns a couple of new moves. This is literally cyberpunk, but better. It's like more advanced combat than cyberpunk in, a, in the One cyberpunk the universe that doesn't break. Is increased mobility. Ratchet can now dash and wall run to traverse levels. This focus on mobility allows players to chain moves together to create exhilarating combat. Now let's jump into combat. A nefarious day spa. If you can distract these troopers, I'll hack Nefarious's propaganda blimp and give this city a message it'll never forget. Looks easy enough. <laughs> Dashing allows you to evade attacks Bro, or gain strategic point, advantages. Enemies can't hit what doesn't momentarily exist. At this point, I'm willing to play anything on my motherfucking expensive router, Dimensional dude. tears in the world allow you to use I'm willing to rip. play anything on it. Another I'll play the furry game. game. Just give me a fucking game, dude. To give me a game. Weapons in Rift Apart utilize the power of the DualSense wireless Fuck. controllers, adaptive triggers, and haptic feedback to allow players to really feel the power of their arsenal. For example, with the burst pistol, players can pull back the trigger partway to peck out accurately placed single shots. But pulling the trigger fully unleashes a rapid fire spread that covers more area. In either case, players will feel each shot burst from the weapon and connect with enemies. With the Enforcer, players can pull the trigger down halfway to fire a single barrel, reducing time between reloads. Or pull the trigger fully and unleash both barrels with a devastating close-range attack. Thanks to the haptics, the player will feel the power of their shots through their hands. The haptics, the haptics is such a, it's like not a big deal, but it's so fucking cool. Let's move ahead a little bit. Just like in Resident Evil, uh, as I was telling you guys, like the trigger was a lot heavier when it was a shotgun. Rivet and Clank, he encounters a nefarious juggernaut. Where did you even come from? Please stand still. Okay, this looks good. During this fight, more dimensional chaos ensues. Thanks to the power of the SSD, we can near instantly teleport players to completely different locations. This isn't some small arena being loaded, but the entire level from a different planet. Okay, PC Master Race. The, the PlayStation the SSD is actually cutting edge. Shut up. It's actually cutting edge tech. <sighs> As you may have guessed, Rivet is a brand new playable character in the series. Where are you taking me? Stop saying console I players discovering SSD. My hideout. But first, I gotta rescue my friends at their gelatonium factory.
PlayStation 5 SSD, from, if I'm not mistaken, is literally faster than the PC SSDs. It's literally built into the fucking hardware, and the games are going to be built primarily with the SSD in mind. It is cutting edge in that respect. Shut up. Did we mention how stunning and alive our worlds are? Thanks to the power of the PS5 and the 3D audio, we've been able to create alien planets with an immersive density like never before. Let's check it out. Speedles, yeah. That's why I'm gonna ride one. Soon as I can get close enough. Back to Ms. Zircon, the weapons vendor. Whoa. I promise we're gonna watch the new this Andrew video, guys. I promise. Last time. After this. Oh, that is because I Stop added crying our about it right now. Mutual friend on Nefarious City. Okay. In Rift Apart, you get to play with an explosive new arsenal, as well as a few returning classics. Here's another example of how we're using the dual sense. With the topiary sprinkler, players will feel resistance in the trigger as they prepare a throw of this garden grenade. Once on the ground and spitting out its rapid growth plant fertilizer, players will also feel when enemies have been topiaried and are ready to be trimmed down. Where is that speed of going? It appears some dimensional distortion is emanating from that cave. Yo, furry game or not, this actually does look kind of cool. I, I mean, maybe I'm so desperate for a game, like a crumb of gaming. Shifts, there are also many pocket dimensions scattered throughout the game. And I mean, this is literally a tech demo, chat. Shut up. It's not going to be, like, thingy. fucking unique. Interesting. Uh, and beyond, like, the new rift tether in your glove cool too. tech that they're showing off. All right, smarty bot. What is this place? I, um... A dimensional pocket? Perhaps a symptom of the Dimensionator's destruction. How do you come up with this stuff? Man, you are good at ads, really? You think I'm giving a hashtag ad to this? Hey, it's Maynard, the Mortz's helper bot. Must have wandered in through the rift somehow. There is the Speedle. No, no, don't hide! Ugh. Hitting its nest might get its attention. Well, hello there. Gotcha. Oh, dear. Maybe Maynard can lead me to the forest. For the record, like... Look, I used to be a fucking PS uh, uh, nerd for the longest time. Uh, after I lost my virginity, I switched over to console gameplay. Okay. But the reality is like, yeah, the, the PC is a lot better, obviously. But it's not as like normy focused. It's, that's changing. But having said that, like, this is still pretty fucking solid. Like, this is some cool tech. Like, the SSDs inside the PlayStation are are not exactly uh, widely available at this point. By the time these games come out, it will no longer be cutting edge. That's the irony of it, but still. Coming, Mortz. We didn't follow that Lombax and his robopet across dimensions just to get stopped by some fuzzballs. So you got, like, nine and a half seconds to tell us where they're at. One. Hang on there now! If you watched our previous gameplay demo, you may recognize the Goons for Less. This rebranded gang has been hired by Dr. Nefarious to attack Ratchet and Clank, and are now also trapped in Rivet's dimension. Here's another new weapon. The Shatter Bomb is a frag-type grenade that deals a lot of damage to your foes. With haptic feedback, each explosion feels incredibly impactful. You can find a mom back. Is coming from? Perhaps they were sucked through the dimensional vortex as well. You know where you're talking about? PCs have newer, faster. 
Dude, PC tech is always going to be more advanced than the fucking PlayStation. Shut the fuck up. That's not the point I'm making. Yo, motherfuckers with their 1080, literally motherfuckers with their fucking 1080 graphics card with like still working on a hard drive are like PC Master Race. Like, shut the fuck up, you nerd bitch. Okay? Shut up. Like, oh, this, this technology has existed for three years. It's the NVMe. Like, shut the, the fuck up. Some of the early shut up. You don't even have it. You're fucking caping for so PCs. We have open Ultimately, any sort of like new the tech makes up. gaming better. I wish everyone would just Blitz be excited challenges. that there's like at least somewhat new tech. Arena I just challenges. want games, okay? I'm fucking mad at Sony more than you are Arrow probably. Combat. I went and I bought the fucking router. And there is not a single goddamn new game Gold in it. I played all collect. the fucking new games that came out. Pocket dimensions to explore. God damn, dude. Unfuckable PC Armor nerds, I swear to God. I have a fucking PC. I like my PC Ratchet more than the PlayStation. Photo. Trust me, I get it. Shut up. And I hope they make none of these games cross-platform, so important to us. you PC such, nerds can't Rift play it. will offer a slew of accessibility options. We'll reveal more about this soon. Experience Rift Apart's new planets, weapons, intense high action combat, and near instant load times, all with some of the best visuals we've ever created. How about that, huh? Yeah. Resistance Sweet! Resistance Sweet! Yeah, I said it. These rifts are getting out of hand. On behalf of all of us at Insomniac Games, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the Omniverse. No, I, I, on June I love 11th. like I mean back in the day, that's exclusives used to be the really. the depths of an alien Wait, ocean. It? Got a first look at Among Us on PlayStation and zipped across space and time in Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Are you fucking joking? Oh my god, uh, this is like they're pulling a Nintendo, Thanks dude. For watching. We'll see you again soon. This is literally Nintendo level uh, disrespect. Ratchet and Clank. What a wonderful surprise! What do you want, Nefarious? We're going to a dimension where I always win! <laughs> Clank? Where am I? A Wombax? Who are you? I'm Rivet. Let's go for a ride. Wait, I have to find my friend. The worst part about it is right now I have a $500 router, right? I have a $500 router currently. By the time that like games start coming out, right now that $500 router is a better bang for your buck than a supercomputer that you would need to like run games like this. Okay? But by the time games fucking come out, I feel like prices are going to adjust in the next 25 years. And there's gonna be a PS5 Pro. Returnal PS5 exclusive comes out tomorrow. I, I will, but I don't know if it's good or not. I I, I got real Warframe vibes from uh, Returnal, and uh, like, and I'm legitimately worried that it's like not gonna be good. Xbox One, ugh, God, shut up. Xbox One, what? By like literally just riding the wave as like PlayStation Five gets all of the fucking hate. Is that why Xbox One? Xbox frogs be like, oh my god, well, they bought all this IP. Eventually, they're going to release something. At least, like, PlayStation has some fucking exclusive titles and IP that they've already, like, uh, talked about. Oh, Xbox One. I love having a... I love having a console that ultimately, literally, cannot create exclusive titles that PC players will not have access to by being owned by the main software developer for fucking PCs. Like... Anything that Xbox gets, I get to play regardless because I have a PC. I just wish that, like, the PS5 exclusives weren't fucking all furry games all day, every day. You know what I mean?
you can have your three PS5 games. It just sucks. Returnal is literally Hades, but with PS5 graphics. Yeah, we'll see about that. Hades has like a compelling plot line behind it. I don't know if Returnal's plot is going to look the same. We'll see. I, I, I'm, I'm excited. Okay, guys. I just said that I'm, I, I might even play fucking Ratchet and Clank, okay? And I've never been a Ratchet and Clank fan. Very clearly, I am so hungry and so thirsty and so desperate for any games that I will be, yes, playing Returnal as well, okay? Just to test it out. Not every roguelike is like the Hades of X. Hades is such a complete package. It's insane. Yeah. I, I think, um, I think Hades is, is really brilliant. Like the way they made that game is, is incredible. The SSD in the PlayStation 5 literally reads at 17 gigs. Per second, all you idiots in the chat have zero clue what you're talking about. Stop pissing us off. Do you just like Warframe? I've never been a fan of Warframe. No, it's like I just. PS5 will stay better than the moderately priced PCs for a while, as long as the GPU shortage is this bad. As far as I know, it's not going to get better either. Yeah. The same PC nerds that, uh, you know, attack PlayStation 5 and uh, refuse to acknowledge it's, uh, it's, it's, I guess, economics in comparison to what you get for how much you pay for, even though there is a massive console shortage as well. Uh are the very same fucking people that drive up the GPU prices and make it impossible to purchase because they're doing fucking Bitcoin mining with it. <laughs> when you play Subnautica turn chat into sub only mode, you will thank me for the suggestion. I'm play the new near on your cutting edge router. No. PlayStation five is like being able to get a fucking Ferrari. And then not being able to drive it. Like, you lose your driver's license. It's just, like, sitting there. It looks really pretty. Every time I touch it, every time I put the controls in my fucking hands, I'm like, oh, dude, it's so sick. Okay? Like, oh, man. And then I played, like, the Resident Evil uh, demo, and I was like, oh, my God. It's, like, little things that... It's like little things that really get you fucking stoked where you're like, oh, wow, when I hold a shotgun, the trigger responds differently than when I hold the fucking handgun, right? Like that stuff is really sick. It's like little things that are uh, that I'm excited to see more of. But it's a 30 minute tech demo. Like it's uh, I just I need more than a 30 minute tech demo, dude. Like what the fuck, dude? But you can only drive around in the parking lot? Yeah. It sucks. There are actual Ferrari cars that you buy, but Ferrari keeps them. Okay, well, after we finish this, we'll watch Andrew's new video, okay? Which premiered. You could use the PlayStation 5 to play DS3. No. There's no new games, dude. Well, there's a new game. No. I mean, really? The entire platform... If, the, if your entire platform moves and shakes with the existence of one fucking game, then you have no new games. That's the point. 
Like, I don't think I've ever experienced this much of a title drought uh, on a new, like, on a next-gen uh, console. Maybe I'm, like, misremembering and I'm getting caught up in nostalgia. But I've never, like, at this point, it's been a fucking year, you know? One entire year. PlayStation 3, I remember it being, like, bad, but not this bad, you know what I mean? Was it this bad? Or was it worse? I can't remember. I really, I, maybe I'm, like, getting hit with nostalgia here. The Wii U, but Wii and Nintendo fans buried the fuck out of that console. No, there's always a drought. There's always a fucking drought in the first year that a next-gen console comes out. Because a lot of developers haven't moved over to making new games for the next-gen. Or when they're working on new games for the next-gen, that takes a longer time to create. PS4 is pretty bad, in my opinion, but PS5 is way worse. Like, <laughs> it's probably worse than PlayStation 4 due to the pandemic. Yeah. I'm so desperate for games that I'll be play a furry game. Also, it's not ignoring all the Mario games. No, 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 no. Guys, Mario Odyssey. And like all the other fucking Nintendo baby games that I downloaded, I will play. I, I'm going to play those games and it's a perfect time to play those games. I already said I was going to play all those games. I downloaded them and I fucking love uh, uh, Switch. Switch saved me like straight up. During this fucking gigantic drought, Switch has been a lifesaver. I think a big part of it is the pandemic that is slow development of games. Still a game drought on PS5 would have them regardless. So yeah, shouts out to Ultra PG for that, right? Okay, let's finish this. Let's finish this video and then we're going to watch the Andrew All Gas No Breaks video, okay? Uh, and that's their essential need. We're watching, for those of you tuning in after the Sony thing, we are watching w why beta males become movie stars. Feature. That's appalling. I wasn't being critical of the institutions. I no, no, I know. I oh, know okay. You weren't. Yeah, I, I'm just. Oh, he I'm was gonna. He was gonna yeah. describe to us what uh, why institutions, uh, like democratic institutions, are not about power. Yeah. Is, is it so? When we yeah. we've 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 we don't give our functional institutions the benefit of the doubt, and that doesn't mean they shouldn't be subject to criticism. But the idea that they're predicated on arbitrary power. I, and that's their essential nature. That's appalling. I wasn't being critical of the institutions. I was no, no, I know. I oh, know okay. You weren't. Yeah, I, I'm just curious about like. I'm just curious about like a human's relationship. Well, you have power. a car. Yeah. Does it work? Yeah. How often? Um, currently, every time I use it. So, like, if you use it a thousand times, how many times doesn't it work? Uh, zero out of a thousand. A car, right? You said car. Yeah, a car. Okay, okay, yeah. Okay, well, that institution is doing pretty well. Yeah, because I I'm has not, a ninety nine point nine percent success rate. I'm not How mad about at flying? the institutions. Yeah, have you crashed yet when you flew? I mean, I think you're jinxing me, but no, uh, I no, have and not. and and they're so safe, it's just beyond comprehension. Yeah, no, I agree. With How does this have anything to do with masculinity or the democratic process? What the fuck? What is he saying? I don't understand, dude. I literally do not understand. Maybe I'm too stupid, uh, but uh, I feel like that's not the case. I feel like the apple cider has rotted his brain to the core. Okay. I... <laughs> Jordan Peterson fans are like Christopher Nolan fans in the sense that they're like, in the sense that like Jordan Peterson will have a b fucking brain dead, uh, uh, take on completely unrelated subjects that he like somehow acts like they're tied together. And his fanboys would be like, ha, you simpleton, you fool. You simply do not have the processing power to understand the incredible take that Jordan Peterson had here. 
agree with you. I'm not. Uh, I'm not upset at like institutions in that. I'm talking about like a human being that is compelled to power. Like I understand certain people being compelled to greatness. That's really cool. You see it in athletes. And what's right? the difference? What's the difference? I think there is as far a difference. As you're concerned. I think there is a difference because I think like once somebody accesses power, they don't necessarily need to be more great. Right. They'll just do whatever they can to continue to have that power where there are people. Okay, what do they do? This is a good thing to dis differentiate. You made this case. Okay. Greatness versus power. OK. OK, let's take it apart. OK. So you just said there's something arbitrary about power. Yeah, I think I think there's something I think there's something about people who desire power instead of greatness. And I think yeah. that power comes with greatness, but if your if your desire is power, I think there is something dangerous there because you're willing to do whatever it is to maintain that power. Whereas it's the great mimicry of greatness. It's the mimicry of greatness. Oh. Greatness deserves power because you want the powerful to be great. You want the great to, to be, be powerful. powerful. Why wouldn't you? Oh, that's why we exalt these people that we believe are great. We want them to have it. They've earned it. Well, who else would you want to lead you? I mean, if they're good at doing something, why wouldn't you? Bro, this is so dumb. This is so fucking idiotic, dude. Like, imagine trying to fucking defend meritocracy this hard, brother. Holy shit. People like Andrew Schultz and people like myself are living, breathing proofs that, like, meritocracy is kind of a fucking lie. Okay? I'm sorry, dude. It's just not real. It, like... No, it's just that, you know, people that are in positions of power deserve it. Why do they deserve it? Well, because they worked really hard. They're, they're, they're great. And they're doing greatness. It's true. You're just mauled. Okay. Well, I guess, uh, I guess you're admitting that I'm better than you then, if it's true. And I've worked harder and, uh, and, and better than you in every meaning. I, I am... I am just so much more important than you than I guess. Because you can't remove the two from one another. Like if you if you're saying like people like meritocracy when they're doing well, when unfortunate things happen and they need help, they suddenly switch. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. It, it's so stupid. <laughs> people come in here and they're like, "Dude, shut up." You are an outlier, not the norm. You commit toaster bathtub. You are an outlier, not the norm. You muppet. I'm not the norm. I'm an outlier. Got it. Okay. That seems like uh, high dosages of copium, my friend. Also, again, know who you are speaking to. You are talking to someone who has... Hart worked very hard to be where he is, okay? Oh, he's just an outlier, dude. For sure. Oh, just God. Just work harder to get better insults. You put them in the front. Hmm. You want to be led with some by someone who isn't great? I mean, you think of all the, all the times we spent as... Like, you pathetic Muppet fool. I simply haven't worked hard enough to achieve the successes that you have, okay? One day I will. I'm just simply not as elevated as you are. I don't, I don't have the same brain processing capabilities that you do. Tribal hunters, who do you put in charge? The best hunter, so or then perhaps the best hunter who's also the most generous. Yeah, exactly. You want the guy that's going to share that. that yeah, uh, right. That, but that would make him a great that's hunter too, right? Great. Because yes. over time, he would have people in his hunting party. You yes. want great. You want productivity and generosity. So how do we greatness? How do we discern between? people who are mimicking power, uh, greatness for power and greatness? Uh, that's a great question. By paying careful attention, by listening and by talking about it. That's mm. the purpose of free speech. That's the purpose of political attention. Mm. Because you want the great, but it can be mimicked by, it's mimicked by psychopaths who yeah. use power. But that doesn't mean that power is the basis of our, of our hierarchical human relationships. That's only the case when they've gone badly wrong. Mm. What do you mean by that? I mean, you, well, when a, when a society is corrupt, then the powerful rule. When a society isn't corrupt, then the great have authority. That's not the same thing. And and what? I really do. I really do feel like Jordan Peterson just fucking lets out word vomit and just, uh, and, and people act like they understand what he's trying to say.
because I, I, I've lost the plot in its entirety. Okay, maybe, again, maybe I'm too stupid to understand what he's saying, but it doesn't feel like he has said anything. This is just an endless loop that he keeps closing over and over again. Every argument starts and ends at the same point. The tautology, if you will. Like, literally everything he mentions is in its own fucking circuit, in its own closed loop. It's like this cycle. The great are great because they're great, and the powerful are powerful because they're powerful, and our institutions are actually wonderful because the greatness that derives from the power is led by the great and not the powerful, which would be corrupt, and institutions would be corrupt if the powerful were... The institutions would be corrupt if the powerful were not great. Okay, sick, dude. Please, give me seven million dollars to do a speaking tour now. Let me pepper in a couple self-help takes in here and take advantage of the fact that you have not had a positive male figure in your life. You fool! Clean your room! Imagine stopping a Harvard lecture every 30 seconds and complaining you can't understand or follow the arguments. Five head. Oh, oh our fucking, our, uh, our uh, favorite troll is back, dude. I know. I don't know how this sounds complex to you. Well, it only sounds complex if you're looking to fucking derive a, an argument. You're looking to grab an argument out of it. If you just take it for, if you take it at face value and just operate with the assumption that like because this person uh is uh someone who has some institutional legitimacy or had some institutional legitimacy at any given time and and therefore everything you are uh you know everything he's saying is 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 great and you act like you understand the point that he's trying to make when he's literally not even stringing along a a cohesive point then yeah, it makes sense. <sighs> anyway. I knew it. This Andrew Schultz fucker was going to become a future Joe Rogan. I called it. My college I used to go to loves and promotes JP since I was a former graduate there. And confusing those. You asked why yeah, yeah. why the beta male is now this, is this object of attention. It's yeah. because we've confused great and powerful. And now we're so afraid of power that we're willing to dispense with greatness entirely or even to question whether it exists. That's the attack on the meritocracy. Damn, you're really spitting, bro. Yo, you are spitting so hard, bro. Hell yeah, brother. You fucking really spitting, dude. Spit that hot fire, JBP. I got to run that back. Sorry. Powerful rule. When a society isn't corrupt, then the great have authority. That's not the same thing. And, and confusing those. You asked why, yeah, yeah. why the beta male is now this, is this object of attention. It's yeah. because we've... Con Bro, this motherfucker literally never even defined what, what greatness is. Like, I don't understand. He's just, is the assumption, like, what is greatness in this, in this argument? What is greatness in this conversation? He literally jumped from institutions are, are, uh, only corrupt if they're led by power and not greatness without fucking describing what greatness is. Like, I, I need him to define the terms that he is using. Confused, great, and powerful. And now we're so afraid of power that we're willing to dispense with greatness entirely, or even to question whether it exists. That's the attack on the meritocracy. There's no meritocracy. Oh, there's no greatness. And no one who has a position deserves it. There's no difference in talent. And that doesn't mean our institutions are pure and that everyone with talent is rewarded. Yes. But, but because no institution is pure and no selection method is 100% accurate, but you made this distinction between great 
and greatness power. and power. Yes. So pursue it. Okay. How do you know someone's great as far as you're concerned? How do I know? Why is greatness and power mutually exclusive concepts? Like what fucking, where are we, where, what are we looking at here? How do we get here from competence being a masculine trait? Someone is great. I have great admiration for the skill. Okay, you admire them. For the skill. Not, yeah, well, that's weird that, see, that's an interesting thing because we have this instinct of admiration. It's mm -hmm. like you see someone and you admire them. Yeah. It's like, yeah. well, why? You want to be like them. Yeah. That's imitation, right? That's the instinct of imitation. Yeah. And because we can identify what's great because it would be better to be great than the way we are. So when <laughs> yeah. we see it, you think, oh, man, yeah. I really admire that. And maybe you're mad about that because you're so unlike that and it's judgmental and makes you annoyed. Right. But fundamentally, you think, I'd like to be like that. So there's one, admiration. You admire what's great if you have any sense. Yeah. Okay, and that happens spontaneously, especially in a domain that you value. Yes, exactly. The more I value the, domo the, do the domain, the more, God, I can't speak, the more, um, yeah, the, the more admiration More admiration. I have. Absolutely. I do not admire power. I, I don't even care about people who are powerful if they don't have something that I admire, some sort of skill set that I care about. The only thing that's nice is like the ease of power. You can open up doors easier, you know, but I... Okay. This is so fucking weird. Like, but how does this... How does this even answer how why beta males became movie stars? Uh, I can't, dude. What the fuck? Okay. I'm I'm trying to fucking follow along and I I can't. This is what the Reddit libertarians talk about, but it's like it feels like this is a conversation between like two fucking undergrads who took an intro to philosophy course and and are, are having a conversation uh, that is like really about like obvious generalizations that they're sitting there and pretending are like incredibly profound thoughts without actually digging deep into, uh, without actually digging uh, deep into like the underlying reasons why they feel a certain way, for example. And you're watching it because you have nothing better to do? No, I actually literally have a bunch of things that are better to do. I'm watching it because I earnestly want to uh, understand the underlying reason as to why people have uh, such a profound loyalty to someone like Jordan Peterson. I'm way more impressed by like a powerful person that actually has a skill I didn't even know about. Like that to me makes me go, oh cool, that, oh, maybe that's why he got there. But just holding the position isn't admirable to me in any way at all. The best major to get laid, get you laid? Okay. So you're literally a Twitch commentator with no intellectual background. What is an intellectual background? Stop undermining or trying to belittle their intellect. You literally have nothing to say.
Hey, you woke brain scrambled egg more. Okay, I'm not going to read the obvious bait. He's basically trying to say movie stars are beta males who mimic greatness and don't deserve the veneration they get. It's a pseudo-intellectual veneer to pretend they're not jealous of the actor's success. Well, as long as you have deemed that uh, the institutions themselves are not corrupt, but only corruptible by those who actually pretend to be great while they are simply just powerful, by virtue of being powerful, then you have neatly tied a circle around the uh, system of meritocracy that I deem to uphold. When in fact, the meritocracy is a lie, but I will never address that and make it seem as though the meritocracy is not a lie, but only bastardized by those who are corrupt. By those who are corrupt. Why are they corrupt or bad? I will not address. I will just simply state that they are bad and that the values that I espouse are good. The only reason why... Okay, stop. I think he's saying that we show beta males because we can't tell the difference between great and power, so we uh, we want to get rid of powerful people. Peterson is still dumb as fuck and never explains the difference, but that's what I think he's saying. I'm not doing the Kermit voice. I'm simply... I'm simply channeling the dragon of chaos every time I talk about this, you fool! Western civilization is degenerating! And you are sitting over here asking me to not misgender a trans person! You fool, have you not thought about the dragon of chaos and what that makes me feel like? Absolutely not, I'll say! Every time you watch GP videos, you just skirt over the real questions asked and pretend to defeat this argument by instant strawman. Like when he said, when will you finish DS3? <laughs> you pointed out a good point with defining terms is basic philosophy paper shit. If you're going to introduce terms key to an argument, you need to define them. It's really simple. And Peterson is unwilling to do that because he knows people can counter and poke holes in his argument if he does that. Yeah, but as long as he uses something that is like identifiable as a positive, like greatness... And as long as the uh, the counter to that is something negative, like, uh, I guess, something that could be seen as negative, but also could be seen as positive, like power, then ultimately, you know, uh, his it, he sets the terms to mean whatever he wants the, uh, them to mean at any given point, and he can literally change them up as he goes along. Anyway, it's time. Uh, is there, is there fucking TOS in here? You guys have been trying to get me to watch the all gas, no breaks or the new channel five video, but if there's TOS in here, I'm going to lose my fucking shit after you guys literally cried about this. I don't need nothing in that building to let us know what we saw. We all saw murder. We all know what the verdict truly is. Show me! Guilty! Show me! Guilty! Show me! Guilty! Show me! Guilty! You stand on a motherfucker's neck for nine minutes, 29 seconds, with your hands in your pocket, with your feet off the ground, all your weight on a person's neck. When people kill in the hood, they get life for it. They go to jail. Cops, they get a motherfucking paid leave when they kill us. And we're supposed to just fucking accept that. We angry. We don't know how to go about it. We don't know how to litigate. We're going to tear something up. That's all the fuck we know how to do. We tired, bro. We hurting. Our children are afraid. Resisting don't mean you need to lose your life. Because I done seen some white people try to kill y'all, stab y'all, run up on y'all. You were very patient with them. We're tired of this shit, bro. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets off. Oh, yeah, he's going to get off. That's why he was looking in that camera like this, bro. He wasn't scared. These are white people that live out in the suburbs. 
they don't know the mannerisms, they don't know how people talk. And then they come into the city, they literally think that this is a wild war zone and they're ready to shoot. We need our own people, you know, securing the streets. I have a friend right now doing life without parole for a crime she didn't commit. She just dropped someone off. She didn't even drive. She dropped them off. They committed a murder. She had no idea, and they implicated her on the murder. She's in Stillwater Prison. Her name's Antoinette Johnson. Free her. She's been in there for four years. So if she can get life without parole, and we seen him murder, then he should be doing the same time. The guy fucking killed him on video. This is as blatant as it get. It's in the black and white. It's in the numbers. If Derek Chauvin doesn't get at least 20, 25, it's going to be an uprising. It's going to all burn. Because it's peaceful, we should overcome marching that shit ain't been working. Where is the dude that killed my homeboy Philando in cold blood? He probably a cop somewhere else in a different state. You feel Geronimo Yanez. Let's see what he's doing. I believe he's supposed. I think he's still on the on the job, but let me just. <sighs> yeah, he was hired by the Fort Worth Police Department two years ago in Texas. What the fuck? Following the recent high-profile resignation of Aaron Dean, the officer who shot and killed an unarmed black woman, Fort Worth police have decided to replace Dean, who shot and killed an unarmed black woman, with Geronimo Yanez. Bro, is this a fucking joke? There's no way. Is this real, dude? What the fuck? Is the Nordly like a... No, I don't know if this is a real fucking website or not. This looks like a fake website. There's no way. There's no fucking way. I think I'm being debated. There's no fucking way. There's no way that that's real, right? There's no fucking way. Yeah, it's it's a it's a, it's got to be it's like a fake website or some shit. It's, it's fucking, there's no way, there's no shot. Let's see. It's satire, right? It's got to be a satire website, right? Geronimo Yanez. No, 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 there's no way. Yeah, no. Is there local onion publication? Oh, okay. The Nordly is Minnesota's local take on the onion. Okay, Jesus Christ. Motherfucker, I picked up on it immediately. Give me a goddamn break. I read it and was like, nope, there's no way. It's a fucking fake website. The fact that it's believable. Like, there's... <laughs> Hold on. The stream is the Onion channel of Twitch? I mean, a big chunk of what I do here is literally fucking talk about people who uh, believe in the Onion-style news articles, so... I mean, he left, he left the police department, right? And he got paid... $48,500 as he left the police department, which employed him at the time. And he will be paid the money in a lump sum minus applicable deductions of withholdings for state and federal taxes. They're also paying him uh, up to 600 hours of accrued and unused personal leave pay. His annual salary was more than $72,600, not including overtime pay, according to the documents released by the city. 